the Andor season finale was a 10 out of 10, and 73% of you agree, it somehow managed to tie up loose ends, delivered believable action, and left most of us feeling satisfied, and also yearning for more. But let's focus on one aspect that made this finale so impactful. The one thing that set episode 12 apart. The emotion. As I've said repeatedly, this show puts us in the place of its characters. It's easier to empathize with them if we, the audience, experience the same things as those on screen. Action is everywhere. Dialogue is special. But if there is no emotional connection, the episode, the finale, and the show itself will not be memorable. Let's look at three examples of how the creators use our empathy to build our investment. First, we see Andor visit his father's stone. This is the first time we've seen what the bricks look like, and just as this realization hits us, we hear Clem's voice. Flashback to a tender father-son moment between him and young Cassian. Not only is this a fond memory for Andor, but it also gives us some more depth of his character as it explains why he is so analytical and observant of the world around him, and Cassian's subtle smile sells the whole scene. Next, we get a beautiful excerpt from Nemec's manifesto, as unexpected as this scene is, we instantly flash back to episodes four, five, and six. We recall how innocent he was, how pure his ideology is, and how tragic it was when he met his end. We are torn between thinking back to what we remembered of him and soaking up the words from the book that was given to Cassian, to us, all those weeks ago. The words have weight, they have importance, the last and lasting words of a martyr, so certain in his belief that his death seemed the proper price to be paid for the ideas he espoused. We miss Nemec, and yet, as we hear his voice and understand the meaning of his words, they become much more than long sentences in a small book. They are the very spark to light the flame of rebellion, and Nemec's legacy will live on. Finally, the call to arms, the first fires of resistance. Somehow, Marva returned. As with Nemec, we are given more from a character no longer with us. But unlike Nemec's manifesto, Marva isn't telling us new ideas or novel insights into the inner workings of the rebellious spirit. She isn't speaking hypothetically or theoretically about a possible path to a better future. She is calling the people of Ferrix to recognize the experience they all share, to wake up and smell the tyranny. As Luthen said earlier in this season, the Empire had been choking the people so slowly they started not to notice. We hear regret in Marva's voice, regret for not acting in boldness while she was still alive. As tragic as this procession is, her message turns that anguish into anger, the apathy into action, and heartbreak into hope. Of course, emotional weight is not the only reason this finale works so well, but it does sell the immersion. It aids us in feeling like a part of the story. And ultimately, that's why we watch Star Wars, to escape the confines of our own reality and to travel beyond, no matter how briefly, to a galaxy far, far away. May this stash be with you, and I will see you wherever I happen to see you in the galaxy.